So now we're on to the mixing part of the Stone Edge overlay application. And I want to note that on our Stone Edge bags, uh, this particular bag holds three different products. It holds your trowel mix, your stamp mix, which is checked, and your spray mix. So make sure you check the boxes, whether this comes in gray or white. Gray is in a gray bag, white is in a white bag. All of your mixing instructions are on the back, okay, that we're getting ready to talk about right now. So, this is a just add water only mix. I like to do mine in two bag batches. We're going to mix up these two uh, bags, put them out. I got one more bag. It's going to take just a, a little uh, under three bags of uh, Stone Edge Overlay Stamp Mix. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix somewhere in between 2.75 quarts to 3.75 quarts to the Stone Edge Pro Stamp Mix. Now, it depends on if someone wants to be, say, a one-man show, and they actually want to stamp it as they go, that is a really good attribute of the Stone Edge Pro Stamp Mix, is if someone wants to actually stamp them until as they go, they can put a small amount of water in there. It's going to be a thicker viscosity. It's not going to be the easiest to screen, but you can take your time with it because you're just working it out, and you're taking your stamp, and you're misting it with your release agent, and then you're hand patting it with your hands and moving on to the next batch. What we're doing today is like a regular crew would be stamping, and we're actually going to probably put three to 3.25, maybe three and a half quarts. Just depends on if you have hard water or soft water uh, when you're doing the ease of application. One thing that's going to have, let you have ease of application is if you're outside, please take the precautions to cool down your substrate by spraying water onto it, to really filling those pores with moisture to alleviate that heat that could fry an egg possibly. You don't want it frying your overlay and flashing it off quickly, which could cause crazing or cracking or, or something like that. And your concrete could be very thirsty if it's open poured, so saturate those pores and alleviate the issue of it sucking the moisture out of your product, which could also cause crazing or, or, or minimal hairline crack. So there are so many different things that you can do prior to an overlay application to help you alleviate uh, situations that could cause hindrance to your product when you are applying it. Another thing is using cold water. Uh, if, if you have a hose laying on the ground, make sure that you let all of the warm water out of that hose before you uh, start using it within your mix because warm water or even hot water will really flash off your mix in no time when you're trying to use it on a rather warm day. Also on a really hot day, once you have your water in your container, something that individuals do is they'll go grab ice bags and they'll plunge ice bags into their water to really get that temperature as uh, cold as they can with the water so that it doesn't flash off the material once it hits maybe the warm concrete even after you've saturated it with moisture. So there are precautions again that you can take on a, on a really hot day to alleviate uh, flashing off of your material. And ice bags in the water is a great way to do that. Uh, vice versa, if it's a nice a uh, really cold, frigid day, and you're trying to get your overlay down, we ask for you to do it at an ambient temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but if you are down there at those temperatures, sometimes people may use electric bucket warmers. They can stick in the water to elevate the temperature of that water to help you have lukewarm or warm water when you have the application to help it flash off a little bit faster so it doesn't stay open quite as long. Uh, you can also use accelerant packs. Fritz Pack has a nice one that you can put in there to help kick off the material and let you have uh, a little less open time so that you can get to carving and coloring a little bit faster when you have those colder frigid days. It's the same thing as you can use retarders on an actual hot day. Uh, make sure that all products used are non-chloride based so that it doesn't deteriorate the integrity makeup of your overlay system. But as long as they're non-chloride and Fritz Packs are good ones and uh, there's many others out there that are not chloride based as well uh, that will be fine to use in these products. So depending on the depiction aesthetic that your customer has chose, uh, you may have a particular base color that you might want to achieve and you can use stone edge color packs. To achieve these base colors, this one happens to be dark cypress. Uh, today we're just doing a gray 
uh, substrate because we're going to hand carve flagstone. So I'm just going to use the actual integral color of the actual mix itself. And again, it does come in white or gray. Most of our color packs are designated for gray mix. We do have one color pack, bone white, uh, that is designated for a white mix. But there are many colors out there on the market, uh, dry formulation that work really well with the Stone Edge uh, Pro Stamp System, Pro Trial, Pro Sprite. So feel free to use uh, those uh, color packs and those dry colors as well. So we're going to mix up our Pro Stamp from Stone Edge Materials now, and I'm going to mix two bag bats at a time. And again, if you're a one-man show, you could be down towards the 2.75 quarts per bag. We're going to be a little bit stronger than that, and then work our way to consistency depending on if we have hard or soft water. So I'm going to put three quarts per bag. And again, I'm going to two-bag batch. And I'll start mixing and then I'll show you we work our way to consistency not exceeding 3.75 quarts. So I'll put my first bag in. So now we're going to begin mixing our first bag. I'll get that thirdly mixed in, then I'll dump the second bag in and mix that bag as well. Turn that down. I don't want to turn up the speed tremendously while I'm mixing because I don't want to work a lot of air entrainment in the mix. But I definitely want to make sure that I get it mixed thoroughly. Now this is a, a handheld mixer by Ivanstock. I also like the uh, handheld mixer by BNN mixing products. But you want something that can really have enough torque to thoroughly mix the product. You don't want to use a handheld drill or anything like that because it's just not going to thoroughly mix the product. Okay, so now we have our second bag in and we can go ahead and continue to mix and probably turn your mixer up a little bit. Let the mixer do most of the work. Don't fight it. And before you start adding water, let it mix thoroughly for a minute to a minute and a half before you start thinking that you got to add water. Because I think you'll be surprised because of the water reducers that we have in the mix. Once it starts to wet out, it'll wet out pretty good. Go around all your walls. So you want to use a pool trowel or a margin trowel or something to really be able to get down and, and, and clean the sides of your mixing bucket container so that you get any dry material that you may have. Get in there nice and well, but you can see, you can look at that. It's like a frosty type consistency, which is really good for an overlay. And that's only three quarts per bag. So you can imagine on a hot day, we're giving you the allowance of up to a three quarter quart per each bag further for doing an overlay. So even doing, if you're inside, you may want to stay down towards the three quart uh, per bag application so that you have less open time so that it doesn't stay open too long inside and you're waiting, waiting, waiting to stamp. So that's why we give you the tolerance of 2.75 to 3.75. Okay, so when you're applying a stone edge or mixing stone edge pro stamp material, you're looking for a nice frosty type consistency. Uh, you don't want water standing on the top. You don't want it to self level out at all, but you don't want it like a wall mix where it just stands tall either. So as you can see, I have a nice frosty consistency. Right now, that's about a perfect consistency for overlay application. And I've added an accelerator to it to be able to uh, come to a uh, faster open time so that we can get to carving and, and uh, creating our steak much quicker. But I just wanted to show you the consistency. Right now, what I'm letting it do is just false set for a minute or two. 
to let it kind of expand like a sponge, and then I'll come back through and re-temper it, maybe add a little a couple drops of water, remix it, and go use it on the job. So now I've let the material fall set, and I'm just re-tempering it, hitting it one more time, making sure that I thoroughly mix through. You want to make sure that when you're mixing a scum edge bag material, that you mix it for a good three minutes fully before you go use it, because you want to make sure you get all the integral composites thoroughly mixed through the product.